Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to share what I believe is the best pathway to becoming a professional game programmer in the industry, especially focusing on the AAA space. This video is aimed at those looking to build a career at established studios rather than going to indie route. Though many of these skills are valuable across all areas of game development, as someone who recently graduated with a CS degree and landed a position at a AAA studio, I want to share the roadmap that worked for me and the insights I gained from senior developers with decades of experience in the industry. Let's dive into my top 10 essential steps to becoming a professional game programmer. Choose the right engine. Your first step is to get comfortable with the professional game engine. While there are many out there, the industry is primarily dominated by two that are accessible to the public, Unreal Engine and Unity. Both are an excellent choice, but for those serious about AAA development, I recommend Unreal Engine 5. Unreal Engine is the engine of choice for many major studios. Epic Games, the creators of Unreal, are constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible in real-time rendering. Unreal Engine also uses C++, which as we'll discuss shortly, it's absolutely crucial for game programming. That said, Unity is still widely used, especially in mobile gaming and smaller studios. Learning either engine will develop transformable skills, but if you are targeting AAA specifically, Unreal Engine is currently the stronger choice. And if you're interested in learning Unreal Engine 5, I've actually started a series on my channel covering the fundamentals. I currently have videos that walk through the basics and teach you how to use Blueprint to create some fundamental gameplay mechanics. While my channel is still growing, I have a lot more planned content on the way, including deeper dives into C++, more advanced Blueprint techniques, and many other topics I will go over throughout this video. So if that sounds helpful, consider subscribing to join me on this journey as I build out more tutorials. Mastering the C++ language. If you want to work as a programmer in the game industry, especially at larger studios, C++ is non-negotiable. C++ have been the backbone of game development for decades and shows no signs of disappearing. Why is C++ so important? It offers near direct hardware access with minimal abstraction, allowing developers to write incredibly performant code. When you are trying to squeeze every last bit of performance out of a console or a PC, that level of control is invaluable. Learning C++ also teaches you the fundamental concepts that are hidden away in other languages. Memory management, pointers, references, and the difference between stack and heap allocation, these concepts are crucial for writing efficient game code. Even if you eventually work with engines that use different languages, the knowledge you gain from C++ will transfer to everything else you do. It's like learning to drive stick shift before automatic cars. Once you know the harder version, the easier ones make a lot more sense. Build a strong computer science foundation. Game development isn't just about knowing how to use an engine. It's about understanding the underlying principle of computer science. This includes data structure and algorithms. These are building blocks of any software. Linear algebra and 3D math, essential for understanding how game engine work. Rendering pipelines, knowing how your game gets from code to pixels on user screen. And of course, optimization techniques, critical for making games that run smoothly. Speaking of 3D math, I cannot recommend enough the book 3D Math Primer for Graphics and Game Development, available at GameMath.com completely for free, link in the description. This book has been my go-to reference throughout my education and it breaks down complex mathematical concepts in ways that are directly applicable to game development. I'm planning to create a comprehensive 3D math series on this channel soon, breaking down vectors, matrices, and more in ways that actually make sense for practical game development. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on these amazing content in the future. Even with modern engines handling a lot of the heavy lifting, studios look for programmers who understand what's happening under the hood. When something breaks or needs optimization, that deeper knowledge becomes very useful. Master lead code and technical interviews. Let's be honest about something that many developers complain about but cannot ignore. Technical interviews and coding challenges. As much as the industry debates their effectiveness, Algorithm challenges and whiteboard interviews remain standard at many companies, especially larger ones. Even in the game industry, where you might expect interviews to focus entirely on game-specific knowledge, general programming challenges are very common. Studios want to ensure you have strong problem-solving skills and want to test your communication skill as well. I recommend solving at least one Lico-style problem every day, focusing on fundamental data structure, stuff like arrays, linked lists, Trees are very important. Practicing common algorithms such as sorting, searching, and graphical traversal, and of course, learning to optimize for both time and space complexity while solving these type of questions. And planning a future series about solving 
common legal problems that appear in game dev interviews, so make sure you are subscribed to get notifications when those come out. I'll be walking through my thought process on solving these problems and explaining the optimal solutions. During my interview process, I encountered several algorithm challenges that were nearly identical to common legal problems. Being prepared for these made a huge difference in landing my current role. Specialized but not too early. The game industry has many specialized programming roles. Gameplay programmers, graphics programmers, AI programmers, tools programmers, engine programmers, as well as network programmers. While specialization is important eventually, I recommend starting as a generalist, especially during your learning phases. Build projects that touch on different systems, try implementing various features, and discover what aspect of game programming you enjoy the most. Most entry-level positions, particularly as smaller studios, require programmers who can work across multiple systems. Specialization often comes with experience, and it's easier to specialize once you have a broader understanding on how everything fits together. Create a strong portfolio. Your portfolio is arguably more important than your resume in game development. Studios want to see what you can actually build, not just what courses you have taken. Focus on quality over quantity. A few polished, well-documented projects are better than dozens of half-finished experiments. Your portfolio should demonstrate technical proficiency with your chosen engine, solid programming fundamentals, problem-solving abilities, and the capacity to finish what you start. For each project, Document your process, explain technical challenges you overcame, and highlight your specific contribution if it was a team project. Remember, recruiters often spend less than a minute looking at your portfolio, even less at your resume. So make sure your best work is front and center. Participate in game jams. Game jams are intensive, short-term game development events where participants create games from scratch in a limited time frame, usually 48 to 70 hours but there are longer ones too. They are like coding boot camps on steroids. These events forces you to scope properly, prioritize features, and ship a playable product. All essential skills for professional development. They also help you build your portfolio rapidly, network with other developers, practice working under pressure, and most importantly, learn to finish projects rather than endlessly tinkering. Many studios value Game Jam experience because it demonstrates your ability to work efficiently and deliver under constraints. Plus, they are extremely fun and motivating. Learn version control and collaboration tools. Professional game development is rarely a solo endeavor. At studios, you will be working with dozens or even hundreds of other developers, which requires robust collaboration tools. At the minimum, become proficient with Git or Perforce for version control, Jira or similar project management software, and some sort of documentation tool. Understanding how to work effectively in a team environment is often overlooked by new developers, but it's crucial for lending and keeping a job in the industry. Create some small projects with friends or fellow developers to practice these skills. Even if you're working solo, use proper version control for your project. It's a habit that will serve you well in the future. Networking and industry involvement. Technical skill alone won't get you hired. You also need to be connected to the industry. The game development world is smaller than you might think, and many opportunities come through personal connections. Way to build your network include attending industry conferences like Game Developer Conference, Packside, or local meetups, participating in online communities like r slash game dev or relevant Discord services, contributing to open source projects, and following and engaging with developers on social media such as LinkedIn. Don't approach networking as purely transactional. Build genuine relationship with offering help, sharing knowledge, and engaging meaningfully with others' work. These connections will not only help you find job opportunities, but also provide mentorship and support throughout your career. Consistency and continuous learning. The final and perhaps more important point is consistency. Breaking into the game industry is challenging and rejection is part of the process. Many experienced developers have stories of multiple rejection before landing their first role. The industry also evolves rapidly with new technologies, new techniques, and tools emerging constantly. The most successful developers are those who embrace continuous learning. Set aside time regularly to experiment with new technologies, read industry publication and technical blogs, take advanced courses in areas you want to improve, and analyze and learn from other games. Remember that your first job might not be your dream role. Some developers start in QA, supporting roles, or as smaller studios before moving to larger companies. Each experience builds your skill and network, bringing you closer to your goal. So, there you have it, my top 10 steps to becoming a professional game programmer. Remember, becoming a professional game developer is a marathon, 
not a sprint. Focus on sustainable growth, celebrate small victories, and don't get discouraged by setbacks. As I mentioned throughout this video, I'm planning more content on many of these topics, from Unreal Engine tutorials to C++ deep dives, 3D math explanations, and even some lead code tutorials. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. Drop a comment below if you have any questions about the path to becoming a game developer, and I'll do my best to answering them. Oh, and there's one thing I totally forgot to mention. Psych.